Hello friends and welcome back to Generation Pixel and if it's the first time you've popped along to the channel then a special welcome to you too because today I'm finally going to take on some of the community questions that have been going about for the last maybe month or so that I just haven't had time to sit down and get my teeth stuck into and today, well, three of them are coming off the list Firstly, I'll be covering Lee, the nerdy geezer, who's asked, what's your favourite controller? It's a great question and one I'm happy to answer. Two, it's going to be Yorkshireman66 and his question, what is your favourite item in your gaming collection? Again, something else that I'm looking forward to answering. And finally, Jordy Slasher Gamer, who asks, what is a horror game? So I'm going to answer that as well as best as I can. So if you want to see the answer to those three questions then just wait until after the titles. So let's talk about the first community question and that's what is your favourite controller? Now, for me, there's an easy answer to that, but rather than taking 10 seconds just to say, this is my favourite controller and that's the end of the question, let me just explain why I got to what my favourite controller is, because let's just go through the history of my controller experience, shall we call it. Anyway, so we will start with the very first controller I ever had in my hands for a for a home gaming system and that would be one of these now if you want to just have a quick look at this boy here we have a Benetone TV Master Mark IV which is it's a Pong clone so as you can see it's a basic design it's designed to be held like this and with your right hand it's just a simple paddle that moves up and down for left and right or up and down in the case of Pong and to be honest with you fantastic controller for what it does you won't get a better controller for a Pong like game or a breakout type game anyway but obviously it's not going to be my favourite controller because it only has one real function and that's to move either horizontally in a line or vertically in a line and games well they're a bit more than that these days so moving on to the next controller that I had in my hand now would be something like this yes a joystick with a red fire button and this is not obviously an Atari joystick it's one of those plug and play TV boxes but it's pretty much what it was back in the day and this had more control Instead of just being able to go vertically or horizontally, we could go diagonally, we could go up, down, left, right, and round in circles if we wished, and also a fire button. Because games evolved from bat and ball to spaceship shooters, or tank shooters, or what you like. But is this my favourite controller? Now, joysticks are fine. And uh, I've never really had an issue with joysticks, with joystick driven games like arcade games, but are they the best controllers? And again, I'm going to say no because we moved on. And where I moved on to next, well, that's, that's a little bit different. At a little bit different, I moved on to controlling games with one of these. Now, this is a games machine itself. It's a ZX Spectrum. It's not actually a games machine. It's an 8-bit microcomputer. But that's what we turned the 8-bit microcomputer into. We turned it into a games machine. A lot of bedroom coders out there back in the day made games for this. And we loved it. And to be honest with you, if it wasn't for the games, this would never have continued for as long as it did through so many different iterations. And for me, my control method I will show you at the top, if I can get that into focus, the cursor keys. So we have five for left, six for down, seven for up, eight for right, and zero for fire. That's right, now that's quite a feat, but that's how I used to control games. Down, up, left, right, and fire. And is it my favorite control method for games? Well, 
To be honest with you, in most Spectrum games, yes, as well, other than obviously the text adventures and things like that, where you had to actually type real words in. But yeah, for moving any sort of arcade sprite about, I enjoyed the cursor keys. But I didn't continue to play on the, the ZX Spectrum. As much as it pains me, I did move on. And where I moved on to next would have been the Sega Mega Drive. Now, I don't have a Mega Drive controller because I don't have a Mega Drive at the moment, much to my shame. But was that my favourite controller? Well, it wasn't too bad. I mean, it was a D-pad, which was probably my first D-pad. I had used the NES pads at friend's house and things like that, and even a Master System pad. But for me, the first D-pad I had was uh, the Sega Mega Drive pad. And it was fantastic, coming away from using four fingers on cursor keys, or even QAOP, as many people would know, to having a D-pad with one thumb that controls all the movement, it was fantastic, plus three fire buttons. Is it the best way to control games? Well, no, because we moved on again. And where we moved on, or where I moved on to, was a regression back to this. But with this keyboard and mouse, because in the early, early 90s, from what, 93-ish to maybe even before, but 93-ish to 96, I played most of my games on a PC, uh, an IBM PC, a 486 processor. Now, not quite the games that we're playing on PCs these days, but that's what I was playing on. Real-time strategy games, or simulation games, and I had a mouse and a keyboard. And to be frankly honest with you, if you get good with a mouse and a keyboard, even in first-person shooters, you probably won't find a, a better, more accurate way to control a game, but for ease sake, no, it's not for me, not at all, unfortunately. And from the keyboard and mouse and moved on to the next one and that would be wait for it people as soon as I dig it up would be this boy here the Sony PlayStation controller now this is basically just a d-pad with four buttons not three like the, the Mega Drive so it had four buttons but these grips here fantastic for holding the controller and triggers up top, bumper buttons if you want to call them that, and four of them. Usual buttons, start and select, and this was the start of something big, and is it my favourite controller? Well, no, it's not my favourite controller, but it's the both of my favourite controller, I won't lie about that, not for one second, because all we did from there was, Sony said if it ain't broken don't fix it, but if it needs a tweak then give it analogue sticks. And that's what they did there, they gave analogue sticks, sticks to the, the DualShock and then the DualShock 2. And they made the triggers slightly bigger because, well, shooters were becoming more popular. And that was going to be your trigger button. But on the whole, we have the same shape, we have this, if you hide away that, you have the dog bone type NES controller or SNES controller, but with analog sticks. Now is this my favourite controller? It's certainly one of my favourite controllers, but it's not my favourite controller because after that we moved on to this. And this is a DualShock 3 with 6 axis. So it looks exactly the same, but there's one thing missing. The wire, they finally decided to go on wireless technology and that was probably the best thing they ever did because, let's face it, there's nothing worse than having a wire trailing to your console and one rapid movement playing whatever game that's getting you overexcited and the whole console comes shooting out, so... Wireless, but the same again. Take away, and we're still back to original type D-pad controllers. But now with some motion control and rumble but not my favourite, not yet because after that we moved on to the DualShock 4 fantastic controller again now it's a bit more substantial feeling than the DualShock 3 it's, I don't know, slightly longer on the grips holds quite nicely in the hands triggers are nicely curved so we're obviously getting more attuned to using these as 
quick fire triggers for first person shooters and the like. Again, same shape again. If it ain't broken, don't fix it. It's a simple D pad on the dog bone, two analog sticks, these lovely hand grips here just to make it a little bit easier to hold, and your triggers which are getting refined. But is it my favourite, the Dual Shot 4? Well, no, because my favourite, without a shadow of a doubt, is this, the Dual Sense, which is Sony's latest controller and as you can see it's slightly different in shape we don't have the the dog bone look about it anymore it's much more rounded squarer it's definitely chunkier and beefier it holds lovely in the hands the triggers again nice shapes nice little lips slightly bigger on the bumper buttons but essentially the same thing and of course the trackpad which I failed to mention in the Shock 4 you have a trackpad here which I had in 4 but this one's a, a little bit more sensitive and a bit well hopefully the developers will use these things eventually but what is extremely special about this one despite the fact that the comfort level is fantastic the weight's wonderful and they haven't really changed much is the haptic feedback and adaptive triggers now adaptive triggers just mean that they can put tension or the, the developers can put tension on these triggers in certain parts of the game for example as everyone will say drawing a bow that will get tight the more you pull it as if you were drawing a bow again if your gun jams they can make that jam too works on all the triggers here so each and every one of them can jam or tighten and then the haptic feedback now I don't use it a lot at the moment I find it a bit gimmicky but to be honest with you what they've done inside here I don't know what witchcraft or sorcery they've done to to get the motion in these grips but if you're walking through an environment where it's say raining then it will feel like little raindrops on your hands and it's the best way I can describe it it's like you feel it running through the course of your hands and the haptics are fantastic again it's got speakers for in-game communication which we had in the 4 as well and a microphone well we have two microphones a microphone there for if you're using that for chat I don't know why because headsets and one at the back and that one's just more of a noise cancelling microphone I believe so not getting stuff from your TV going through that one so it can cancel what it can of it so there we go, the dual sense. Definitely, without a shadow of a doubt, my favourite controller of all time and the newest one. And I can't see this being improved on anytime soon. Now, before I go and before I finish with the, the controllers, I don't want to put anyone's nose out of joint because I have and do use one of these styles of controllers. And I use it for PC gaming because if you're Microsoft games your PC games so now I don't really like them I'll be honest with you and as soon as I, I set up my Sony controllers on the PC then that's what I'll use but at the moment I'm using one of these and the reason I don't like it as well and look at the analog sticks see them offset one down low one up high yeah if I show my thumbs yeah they're pretty much in the same place people so now maybe if my thumb was whoop, up there somewhere then I could understand because you know thumb up there yeah well sorry Microsoft get your analog, analog sticks sorted but other than that people seem to like them I think the triggers are better as well better shaped they've always been better shaped but they've always been more online shootery of Xbox anyway there we go the DualSense 5 my number one controller of all time and I've only had it for seven months now or whenever it came out but it's fantastic I can't sing its praises highly enough so let's cut straight to the next question and the next question comes from uh, Yorkshireman66 and Yorkshireman66 wants to know what my favourite thing from my gaming collection is now I have a few things that you would imagine would be my favourite. I do have a PlayStation 5 at the moment, which I understand not everyone can get their hands on. And it's fantastic, but is it my favourite thing at the moment? Well, no, but it's, it's certainly up there. Now, I also have a backwards compatible PlayStation 3. Is that my favourite thing? 
Well, it's certainly up there, but again, it used to be. It used to be, without a doubt, my favourite thing whatsoever, because obviously I could play PlayStation 1, 2, 3, all on the one console, all through HDMI and all upscaled to a, to a decent factor anyway. But that's not my favourite item at the moment either in my gaming collection. Actually, it's, it's a little oddity that I have at the moment that is my favourite thing that I have in my gaming collection. And it's not a game and it's not a game console. What it is, is this. And this is a RetroThink 2 times or 2x if you want to. And this boy here, which I will show you better in some B-roll, is a line doubler. So basically what I can do with this boy is I can put in component or composite cables from older machines and it will spit it out via mini HDMI to HDMI to a, a line doubled version on screen on a modern display but I can play PlayStation 1 games, PlayStation 2 games, GameCube games and it even obviously can go as far back as the Super Nintendo and the uh, NES because they also put out composite signals so without a shadow of a doubt favourite thing, my most favourite thing here is my retro tank I love my retro tank and yes there are better things in the market and they've just released a retro tank 5x which are five times which I really want to get my hands on to but I'm not going to spend it what it would probably cost about £400 or so to get one of them over here anyway but at the moment the retro tank 2x two times fantastic also puts S video out which I failed to, to mention there but yeah it can take in S video and spit that out to HDMI and of course there's various settings so you can just get the picture the way you want it on a modern display and play retro games and at the end of the day that's what it's all about it's about the playing of the games um, yes I have the consoles and yes they're wonderful but if you can't play them what's the use and that there is the favourite item I have my favourite item in my gaming collection at the moment which leads us on to the last one and that's a question asked by Mark Jordy Slasher Gaming and he asks what is a horror game? So, what is a horror game? Or more appropriately, or more specifically, what's a horror game to me? Because everyone out there have a, a different idea as to what a horror game is. And I know that because I've been watching some of the responses, and the responses have had things like Devil May Cry as a horror game. Now, yes, Devil May Cry has horror elements. There are demons. There is a lot of gore and bloodletting and violence, and these are all horror tropes, horror themes if you want, but do they make for a horror game and my answer to that is no. You see, I, will, I can name a few games that I would consider horror games and you have The Man of Medan and Little Hope and Until Dawn are three classic modern games that are horror games and way back to probably what is considered one of the first horror games you have, Resident Evil and Resident Evil is also a horror game. Now, what makes them a horror game and things like Devil May Cry not a horror game? Well, a, the gameplay has to be asymmetric. The character that you're in control of has to be so much weaker than the, the big bad that's after you. Because if it's not, then there's no sense of dread, there's no sense of fear, and that's where true horror comes into it. A sense of fear or dread or even repulsion, but but you can't just have repulsion alone. I mean, if you were just to simply watch a, a horror movie and all it was was watching someone butcher a line of people one after the other and nothing in between, then that's repulsive, but it's not horror. It doesn't put fear into you. What a horror game or horror movie has to do is it has to fill you with the need to run and hide. And that is a true test of a horror game, in my opinion. If you go into a game, like Devil May Cry, face hordes and hordes of demons, but can happily hack and slash your way through them without too much worry that you're at any risk, then it's not a horror game. If you, however, get dropped into a mansion 
where you're set upon by zombies and your first instinct and sometimes your only option is to turn and hightail it to the nearest door and hope there's no zombies on the other side of that door, well, that's a horror game. A horror game really has to make the first option run and hide. If that's not the first option, then it's not a horror game and I will explain that a little bit more by using Resident Evil again because the first time you play Resident Evil, your first instinct when you meet that first zombie is to turn, hightail it to the door and get back through to Barry. Now that's your first playthrough and throughout the entirety of your first playthrough, you are sneaking through doors, you are jumping every time a dog comes through a window or a crow flaps its wings and you're constantly looking for a way past the zombies rather than trying to fight the zombies. So your first playthrough of Resident Evil is probably as true as you will get to a horror game. Now your second playthrough, it's less like a horror game and it becomes more like an action game and that is because you're aware of the situation you, you're no longer looking to run and hide you're now looking to have the ammunition to kill all the zombies and the more you go on with Resident Evil you get to a point where you're so good at it and you finish it in under an hour and a half and you get an unlimited rocket launcher and you can breeze through the game with unlimited rockets just killing everything in your past and it's no longer a horror game but that first time that you play Resident Evil, that very first time you play Resident Evil, it's probably the truest form of horror game you will ever play. And yes, they're doing good things with, as I said, the Dark Anthology series that they're doing just now, Man of Medan and Little Hope and Until Dawn, which was earlier. They're doing wonderful things with that, but they're very cinematic. But again, asymmetric gameplay. Your character has to be weak, your enemy has to be strong, your first instinct has to be run, or hide. Take Alien Isolation for example, another fantastic example of a horror game. And if you want a comparison on movies then Alien, the first Alien movie, is a horror movie whereas the second one, Aliens, is it's an action sci-fi slash horror because it's got horror elements. Not a horror, first one is, second one's not. Why? Because your characters are overpowered. You're not just Ripley or the crew of the Nostromo on a ship, basically unarmed and trying to avoid this killing Xenomorph machine. And on the second movie, you've got a team of Marines with heavy artillery and grenades and all sorts of support. So that's the difference. And for me, it's the same with the game. If the game, when you drop into the game, if your first instinct is to run and hide, and it's a horror game. It doesn't need the werewolves or vampires or ghouls or ghosts or goblins. Ghouls and goblins also not a horror game. But you see what I'm saying here. It's not a horror game if it doesn't make you run and hide. If you're happy to approach the enemies in the game and hack and slash until your heart's content, then it's a hack and slash game. It's not a horror game. It might have horror tropes. It might have horror themes. It might have horror villains. But it's not truly a horror game because it's for it to be a horror game the horror has to be the main body and soul of the game it has to be the part that's drawn you in i hope you've enjoyed these three answers to these three questions and i'll try and answer much more in the future i know there's a ton more questions out there anyway if you've enjoyed my answers thank you very much for watching and give us a thumbs up and if you've enjoyed this video and you want to see more videos, not just like this one, I don't just answer questions for the community, I do a whole host of other stuff, then hit the subscribe button, it's always there for you and I'm uploading, I'm uploading content as often as possible. So thank you again for watching and until next time, cheerio!